Hello, and welcome to today's webinar, which offers an introduction to the Arduino Engineering Kit Revision 2. Thank you for taking your time out uh, to be here. Uh, before we jump in, uh, just a few housekeeping items. We'll be running a, a live question and answer session towards the end of the webinar. Uh, please feel free to use the, the chat feature on your participant panel and pop up any questions you may have in there, and we will address them when the time comes. Also, if you miss any part of the content today, uh, not to worry, we will be sending around an on-demand recording uh, when it's available. My name is Brandon Brill, and I am a former educator and have been an education consultant and friend uh, of education for nearly a decade now. Uh, I also fill a sales leadership role uh, here with Pitsco Education in uh, Pittsburgh, Kansas. Uh, with me today are two colleagues from our I'm pleased to introduce them now. Uh, the first is Ernesto Lopez. Ernesto is a telecommunications and electronics engineer who specializes in PCB design, robotics, electronic prototyping, signal processing, embedded systems, and control. He has experience in C++, MATLAB, and Simulink programming. Uh, currently, Ernesto works at Arduino as an application engineer and also as the Arduino engineering kit product owner that we'll see more of today. Also, also with us today is Roxana Escobedo. Rox has a background in design, communications, and education. Uh, she has experience in researching, creative teaching, and learning, as well as in designing learning environments for students and children with different learning abilities. Currently, Roxana works at Arduino as an education partner trainer. And I'd like to personally thank Rox and Ernesto for being with us today and we'll officially turn the presentation over to them. Thank you. Thank you, Brandon. Thank, and you. thank you. Pitsco. Pitsco is our uh, partner. So we're so excited and very happy uh, that they invited us to do this webinar. So thank you again to Pitsco Education. And thank you, you all, for coming today. So before we start talking about what this uh, hands-on learning tool is, they are doing it. They are doing engineering. Tools. We want to show you what these webinars are going to be about. So uh, we really want you to have a very good understanding of what the Arduino Engineering Kit is. So that's why we divided the content into four webinars. So each webinar it's going to be uh, bi-weekly at the same time. Uh, it's for Central European time, which is my well, we're in Europe. So probably this is uh, in the morning for you. And for each webinar, we're also ha uh, having a special guest, which actually work designing and developing uh, the engineering kit. So this first webinar is going to be an introduction. On the second webinar, we're going to talk about the software, MATLAB and Simulink. Uh, the third webinar is going to be about the Arduino engineering kit learning platform. And on the last webinar, we're going to show you some projects, some demos. Also, uh, the format for each webinar will be like this. It's divided into three parts. On the first part, I will share with you the table of contents, what topics we're going to present. Then I will give you an introduction and an overview. Then we'll bring, uh, we will bring our special guest, and he will talk more in detail about a particular topic. In this case, Arduin, uh, Ernesto will talk about more in detail about the hardware and the software. And then on the third part, we're going to share with you some uh, useful links so you can download more information and read more information about the Arduino Engineering Kit. Then we will have a Q&A session. And then at the end, we will uh, show you what is the next webinar. And then for the sub subsequent webinar, the format will be exactly the same. But at the beginning, we will show you a recap for the previous webinar. So I really hope to see you all for like in every webinar so you cannot miss anything. And as Brandon mentioned, please uh, feel free to use the chat if you have any question. So for this webinar today, uh, we're going to talk first about what is Arduino education, what is our goal, and then um, we're going to tell you what is the engineering kit, what are the learning goals, benefits, what can you do with it, and then we will show you an unboxing video so you can take a look at the content. Uh, Ernesto, then we will talk us more in detail about the hardware and all the physical components that you will find in the box. 
and also he will show you she will ho she, he will show you how to install matlab simulink and additional add-ons you need to install to get started with the with the engineering kit and at the end our q a session so i want to tell you first a little bit about what is arduino i'm sure that many of you know what it is or have heard maybe what it is but now i'm going to tell you what it is so if someone asks you you know exactly what to say so uh, arduino is uh, an open source electronics platform based on hardware and software easy to use by hardware uh, you know i mean the boards arduino has an incredible wide array of boards depending on what you want to do what project you want to build and also depending on your knowledge and in software, I mean the Arduino IDE, which is the integrated development environment, which is the software we use to program our boards. We have the online version and the offline version. So this uh, Arduino IDE is open, it's free. Anyone can go to our website and download it for free. And with the hardware, which are like all the boards, you can go to the Arduino website and click on a particular board and then you will find a tab called documentation. You can see how the board is designed. So that is open to anyone if you're curious to see how they were designed. And being open source has brought Arduino a worldwide community of educators, uh, makers, hobbies, students, programmers, artists, like you name it. And that is really cool because they have uh, contributed with their knowledge to what Arduino is today and now. So the, the fact that you can share what you do, the fact that you share your code and your circuit gives the possibility to others to learn. So that's really great. And we love that about that our community. So that, that's awesome. And also Arduino has powered thousands of thousands of projects. You can go there. If you haven't seen what you can do with Arduino, you can go to Project Hub and you will have uh, some examples of what you can do with Arduino. But, hey, Rox. Uh, Rox. Yes. Hey, real quick. Hey, I don't know if you're sharing your desktop or not, but we're not seeing it if you are. Oh, no, my God. Okay, yes, I'm actually sharing my desktop, but let me take a look again. Now? Now we got Can it. You? Thank you. Oh, my God. Thank you for, sorry. <laughs> no problem. Oh. Well, you didn't miss anything, just text, because now comes the interesting part. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So uh, Arduino was born almost in March, 16 years ago. Uh, and it was born in Italy at the Institute of Interaction Design in Ivrea. So here we have our four co-founders and they also have a background in education. So what they were trying to do in Ivrea was trying to teach interaction students how to prototype in an easy and affordable way. So I'm myself an interaction designer. So what we do is design services and objects that interact with people. So we need to prototype a lot. So but that, but that time it was very, very hard to find uh, something to make you like this prototyping easier and affordable. So that's how Arduino was uh, born, to help design students that we no, don't necessarily have this uh, engineering in mind. So make the technology easy to use and also affordable. And they keep it open source. So any student, anyone that wants to innovate and create projects can do it. And they can also share those projects. So that's how Arduino was born. And, and at Arduino Education, and as I mentioned in you before, our co-founders has they have a background in education. So they know that the things that teachers need. So it's very hard that when you want to start teaching your students something related with technology, like find for resources, find for curriculum, find like hardware and software. So it's very hard. You can find many things on the internet, but it's very hard to find everything in just one place. So that's what we do at Arduino Education. We offer STEAM content, curriculum alignment, a learning platform where you will see all lessons and projects. We offer in one kit hardware and software. And we're very interested in students to develop the 21st century skills, uh, like 
uh, communication, working in teams, uh, thinking creatively and critically, among others. And we also have this project-based learning approach. So everything is very practical and hands-on. And as we know that teachers are the ones implementing and teaching this with the students, we offer them training and support. So now that we know and you know what Arduino is and what Arduino education is, uh, let's take a look. No, let's talk about what the engineering kit Ref2 is. So we developed this in collaboration with MathWorks. Probably most of you know that that MathWorks specializes in mathematical computing software. So we work very closely with them when we develop this, this kit. So what this hands-on learning tool does is help students to learn the fundamental aspects of mechatronics and engineering using MATLAB and Simulink. So they will learn also different, or they will gain different um, knowledge also as model-based control system, image processing, robotics, and more. And what is very interesting about the engineering kit is like the students will be able to make that connection what the things they learn with the real world industries. So, and as I mentioned in you before, we encourage students to really think critically and really improve what they're doing. And really based on hand, this hands-on practical approach, we want them to experiment. And this is ideal for advanced high school and also college students. So the engineering kit Rev2 has done very, very well that last year in the BET Awards to the, um, 2020. I don't know if you're familiar with this. This is an education and technology show that happens in London every year. And it brings uh, edtech providers, startups, and thousands and thousands of attendees from more than 100 different countries. So it's about the global education community. So the engineering kit won the higher education or foreign education and uh, digital services. And this was some of the criteria the, judge, the judges took into consideration to give the engineering kit the award. Also, it's very interesting uh, when we have uh, these kind of webinars uh, with teachers, engineering teachers, they say, oh, I love this kit. I hope I had that when I was a student. It makes so much easy the learning part and they love the hands-on. So we're very happy and very proud that, the, well, that we got this award. So we also want to share this with you. So it, it is a really great tool to learn this um, mechatronic and robotic kits. So um, this is a kit and we recommend uh, students from 17 years and up to start using the kit. You can use it in the classroom or you can also use it for uh, individual us usage or remote learning, hybrid or blended learning. It's possible to use that. We recommend for a better learning experience to have one or two students per kit. And here are again the learning outcomes. Students will learn the core uh, aspects of engineering and mechatronics. They will learn also MATLAB and Simulink while developing these first century skills and the content is available in English and Spanish. And uh, as I mentioned in before also, this kit comes with an online platform. Step by step on how build the projects, you will, you will see some videos uh, to make it that easier. And students collaborate in small groups uh, in class or remotely, it's fine. We also have available a curriculum grid that we are going to show in the handout section. And also the educators can tailor this according to their needs. And we also offer, of course, training and support. And for the hardware, we use the Nano IoT series reward and a nanomotor carrier that Ernesto will tell us more in detail. And the software, uh, it includes one year trial for MATLAB and Simulink and the Arduino ID. So that is all what you have in the kit. Rox, this might be a good time to ask the question, but uh, what is the difference between the Rev1 and the Rev2? Uh, and if that's Ernesto's question, we can save it too. 
Y yes, we, yeah, I don't know, maybe Ernesto can take it later, but yeah, we make some improvements in the content and in the hardware part and the pieces. But Ernesto can answer that question when he, when he comes. But basically, we made a bunch of improvements. So uh, what if we take a look at the unboxing? So you know exactly what is inside the toolbox. The Arduino Engineering Kit Rep 2 provides everything necessary for students to get started as engineers and to practice for a real world industry. The kit comes with a toolbox with all the physical components you need to build three projects, a self-balancing motorcycle, a drawing robot, and a webcam controlled rover. The toolbox includes instructions on how to set up your kit with the online platform, a registration code to access the online platform, and it's designed for students and educators to find and store every component easily. In the top section of the toolbox, you will find the components needed for the projects, such as two gear DC motors with encoders, one DC motor with encoders, and a standard servo motor to add mobility. The microcontroller chosen for this kit is the Arduino Nano 33 IoT, an effective board due to its size and connectivity. Together with the board, the kit includes a nano motor carrier to facilitate motor control. The kit also includes several sets of M3 nuts and bolts for assembling, and a webcam for students to learn about real image processing. To power the projects, we provide a lithium-ion battery with a battery holder and a charger. Additionally, the kit includes all the mechanical pieces, cables, and even markers for students to complete the lessons provided in the kit. Lastly, the toolbox comes with all the assembly pieces for the three projects, which can also be used to experiment, design, and develop new solutions. Together with the toolbox, you have access to an online platform containing learning materials with getting started guides, step-by-step -step instructions, lessons, and project activities. Bring project-based learning to your engineering lab with the Arduino Engineering Kit Rep 2. The Arduino Engineering Kit Rep 2 provides everything necessary for... Okay, so, uh, oops, let's go back one. Okay, now we know what is inside the, the toolbox. As you can see, it offers everything uh, you need, so it's very cool. So, but it's important to note that the kit, the kit includes all the components, hardware, and everything, all the pieces, to build one project at a time. So it only comes with one microcontroller, so you cannot build the three projects at the same time. So it's one project at a time. The projects can be done individually uh, with teams that no more than two students for the best like, learning experience. And we also have available replacement parts, and you need to contact Cisco if you need those parts. Then, now we know uh, what is inside the kit, but then how we start using the kit. So we have 10 simple steps. So for the first step, then you, you register your kit. So you saw on the video that we have a toolbox, and then on the lid, you have a cardboard. There you will find a URL. So you go to the, the URL, and then you will be asked to create your Arduino account or login if you already have one. That's step number two. Then you will be asked you will get access to the online platform. So we recommend, of course, to first to read the getting started section so you get familiar with the hardware. And also there you will find all the installation that you need to do, the MATLAB and Simulink add-ons and project files. You will find that step by step. And then once you have everything ready, you go to the training part, which is following all the lessons, building all the projects, and if you need support, you just contact Pitsco if you need anything. And the last part of this is the implementation with your students. So the implementation requires you to enroll your students so they can have access to the online platform. And then you can start uh, teaching uh, in the classroom or remotely, so as you want. So then these are the steps that you need to follow. Okay, next one. But let's take a look more in detail about the registration and the enrollment so you know what to expect when you actually are doing that. So 
as I mentioned, step number one, uh, here is the engineering kit cardboard. Just go to the URL Arduino CC slash education. Then you will see this screen to sign into your Arduino account, create a new account or login if you already have one. You can even sign uh, up with Google or your Apple account. Then you will see this screen where you are asked to type your, your registration code. If you don't remember where it is, you just click on where can I find my code and then you will see this graphic so you know where it is. Then you just type your code, click on next, and then you will get this screen and then you click there and then continue to the e-learning platform. And this is the landing page. So there are three clicks or three steps to get access to the platform. But if you look closely to the, um, the, the right, part of the platform here, you will see the dashboard. Here is where you enroll your students to get access to the platform. So let's take a look at the dashboard. So here the, the educator has the chance or the ability to manage the students' accounts. So you can invite your students, you can see if you have pending students that haven't accepted the invitation to join the platform. With one kit and with one account, you can register up to 50 students to join the online platform. So the only thing you need to do is click on add students and you will see this. You can enter manually all the emails or you can use a CSV file and upload it. It's very important to tell that you tell your students that the accounts uh, they use to create the Arduino account and the account that you will send the invite, the invites are the same, they need to match. That's the only requirement or that's the only thing you need to, to tell your students to, to be aware of. Then you click an invite and then they will get an invitation. So another important thing to note, the code for the one year MathWorks trial license and the access to the online platform, they are not transferable. And each engineering kit is linked to one Arduino account. So every time you register a kit, you need a different Arduino account. So what we do at Arduino is like we don't create a new different like Google accounts or whatever. We use our same account, but we uh, create multiple adding the plus and other thing to our existing account. So that way we don't create many, many accounts. And for the Arduino user, we just add a number or a symbol. And that's the way we, we do it at Arduino and it's a, a nice recommendation. And also the one year MathWorld trial license is good for two computers. Okay, now we know how to get access to the platform. Let's see how to enroll the students and we will take a look at two user cases. So the first case, let's say that you have a classroom or two of 20 students, so you buy 10 kids. So the first things you need to do, of course, is to register the, the, the kit, as I, sh I show you, with one account. So then uh, you enroll your students and they will receive an invitation and then you go through the lessons and the projects. Then your students will get an email to get access to the platform. They need to create their Arduino account or log into one if they already have one. And then they get access to the platform and then works in team. So as one student kit give access to 50 students, if you have a class of 20, you can work for one class or for one year or for one period. But when this first class or first course ends, what you need to do is delete or erase this group of, the, of your students' account and then add new accounts, the new 20 students. And then you will have 40 seats, right? And then you will have for the third year 10 more seats, and then what you need to do is just register a new kit to have more seats. So let's say that one kit, depending also on the number of how, of how many students you have, but remember that with one kit and with one account, you can enroll up to 50 student, students to the learning platform. And then when the students finish um, all the lessons and all the projects, they can still experiment further with the kit because they have the parts, they have the hardware, they have the code, so they can keep uh, doing things. We're going to discuss this for their experimentation in webinar number four, so that's very interesting. And then for your second year course or with the next class you want to use the kit, 
then remember to erase the previous uh, group of students and then add the new ones following the exact same process. And in case, we know that many universities already have the MadWorks campus license, but if it's the case that you don't have that, after the first year, you need to contact uh, MadWorks to renew the license by clicking on this link, and then you can talk to them. But then this is how um, this first scenario with users work in case we're talking with the classroom and that you want to work with the students with one click. And the other user case is individual usage. Like now the, for the current situation, you can use in the nearing kit in that way. So in this case, we don't actually need an enrollment. So maybe it's a student that wants to buy the kit and do it on, the, on his own or her own, that's fine. Or maybe it's a teacher that wants to try the, the kit and they maybe when everything back, go back to normal, they, he or she wants to use it in the classroom. So they follow exactly the same process, register the kit, create the account, access to the platform, and they just build the lessons, uh, go through the lessons and build the projects. But in here, maybe it could be interesting that you could enroll someone, for example, if you have a colleague that you want to take a look to the platform, you can invite him or her and say, take a look at the project and the, the curriculum, what do you think? Maybe we can use that in the classroom. So that, that way you can enroll or invite that colleague. And also for students, if they, can, if they want to share that with their classmates, they can also enroll others. But then these are the, 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 the most common cases of um, the enrollment cases we have for the student, for the engineering group. This is how the enrollment and registration works now, but we are working in designing a different management system. So uh, we want this system has unlimited student enrollment and a better uh, like user experience and a better flow. So now it's in the making, so we will keep you updated, but right now this is the way it works. So um, now it's time for bringing Ernesto, our special guest. So Ernesto, as, as Brandon mentioned, he's an engineering kit product owner and also he's a hardware engineer. And he will talk uh, to us a little bit more in detail about hardware, software, and the advantages of using the engineering kit. So Ernesto, are you there? I am here. Do you hear me? Awesome. Yes. Here. Awesome. Thank you, Rox, for the presentation. Uh, oh. Thank you, Pisco, for, for hosting this webinar. And thank you, everyone who is here listening to us today, joining us today. Uh, my name is Ernesto Lopez. Um, I'm the product owner of the engineering kit. Uh, just to give you a little bit more background by myself, I've been working at Arduino for about six years. Uh, I started working as a hardware designer. And I was actually involved in the hardware design of this kit, the Rep1, and also in the Rep2. And eventually, I became the product owner. Uh, which basically was coordinating all, all the tasks to uh, to take the product to uh, to through development and to the launch. Uh, today, I'll be uh, talking a little bit uh, more in depth about the projects itself, the hardware contained in the kit, and uh, a little bit about the software installation as well. Um, hopefully, you will be you will be also joining me in the last webinar where we are going to show you some some demos of the kit. Uh, but yeah, so let, let's talk about the, the kit itself. So what, what are the benefits of, of the engineering kit? First, uh, I would say more, one of the most common feedbacks we hear from professors when we ask them about what they need in order for them to develop an engineering class, it, it, it basically comes down to three things, right? The, fir the first one is that they, they want to have something that is, uh, is useful for the future career of their students. Uh, and, of course, the, the second thing, um, they want to have something, they want to incorporate the latest technology into their curriculum. They want to have tools that are currently used in the industry. And of course, they want to have a class that is engaging and motivating through the entire, uh, through the entire uh, span of the course. Uh, this, is, this is often easier said than done, and many professors face a challenge that they don't have, they have limited time or resources in order to develop this, this, this these courses and i think that's where the engineering kit comes in uh, because the, the goal of the kit is to assist professors in this goal 
uh, providing a kit that contains both the theoretical knowledge, uh, uh, tools that are really used in the industry, uh, are widely known in the educational field and the industry field, and also it contains a lot of hands-on projects that are fun to build and will keep their students engaged. So that's that's the main benefit of the kit. Um, we can, yeah, thank you. Um, so what are the key learning values of the kit? The, the kit is, uh, as it was mentioned before by Rox, it's totally focusing on um, robotics and, and mechatronics engineering, uh, but pretty much any, any, any course that is uh, using uh, or, or that is uh, using MATLAB or, uh, or simulating or, or is giving an introduction to MATLAB and simulating can benefit from the kit. Uh, but more on the specifics of, of the content, uh, we we uh, we touch uh, a bunch of topics uh, surrounding mechatronics and robotics. For example, we we uh, we touch a lot of control theory. We speak about open loop versus closed loop uh, fundamentals of PID control. Um, we do a little bit of system modeling. So, for example, we simulate uh, physical models uh, virtually before deploying them in the hardware. So, we kind of teach uh, the students this, this way of workflow where they can simulate things before trying in real hardware. Um, we uh, speak about uh, robotics and mechatronics fundamentals. We, we speak about, for example, what is a DC motor, what is an encoder, what are the difference with a stepper motor, uh, how to operate uh, batteries, uh, and you know, what size uh, IMU sensor, things like that. Uh, and of course, we have the mechanical parts. So we, we include mechanical parts that the the students will uh, use to um, to assemble the kit. But in addition to that, we also explore uh, some of the other features that comes with the MATLAB and Simulink tools, which are, for example, the image and processing uh, toolboxes. Um, we uh, we include, for example, uh, in some of the projects, we do some of the image uh, we do some image processing either to detect uh, an object in the in an arena or uh, to, uh, to detect the contour of an image for uh, one of the projects to you know, um, replicate the image on a real whiteboard. Uh, this, uh, the, these are some of the features that we, uh, that we explore. That is also how to analyze and visualize data um, and how to, uh, how to use mathematics and, and physics uh, in order to solve a real engineering problem. And these are basically covering most of the hard skills that are covered in the kit. But of course, you also have the soft skills, uh, which is um, teamwork if you're working with other students, time management, problem solving, um, and so on. Um, uh, so now we're seeing here, uh, the kit is primarily targeting three types of, of, uh, of users. So we have on one hand, the students who are learning about mechatronics. Uh, we have the professors who are looking for practical resources to support their class, whether that is basing the whole class on the kit, which we have seen sometimes, or uh, just as an extension or, or a hands-on session uh, from their theoretical class. So sometimes they use it just to add a more uh, experimental session at the end of their course, or adding maybe a, a, a project for the students to finish their course, or they, basic, or they are basing a new course entirely on the kit. Uh, and then we, of course, have um, hobbyists, people who just like to learn about robotics. Uh, they have a, a particular interest in Arduino on, on natural tools. And this kit is perfect for them because it combined the two things. Um, here we can move on to the next slide. Um, yeah, so let, let's talk a little bit about the uh, software installation part. Um, the, the engineering kit use uh, MATLAB 2020B. So this is a requirement for actually being able to download all the latest uh, add-ons uh, uh, that you need to run the kit. Um, and of course, uh, uh, all these steps are uh, very clearly explained in the first chapter of the kit. So once you have the, uh, once you gain access to the content, the first thing you will encounter in the first chapter is an overview of the kit, a brief description, and then immediately uh, step by the step by step process on how to do the complete setup, including MATLAB and Simulink installation process, and all the extra packages that you need to install in order to operate the project. So of course you need um, the MATLAB and Simulink support for Arduino hardware. You also will need uh, the drivers for the webcam, 
And the project files that basically includes um, MATLAB functions and Simulink models that are uh, um, together with the with the projects. Um, we can we can move to the next slide. Uh, one thing that uh, is uh, like Rox was mentioned as well uh, is that the kit comes with a uh, individual free trial license. However, in many cases, uh, uh, especially if you're a professor from a technical university and you're you're teaching MATLAB and simulating courses, you probably already have a campus-wide license. In this case, you won't need to install the uh, free trial license, and you can just, uh, you have already access to, uh, to, to the tools, and you can just proceed to install the add-on packages. The only thing you need to make sure is that you have the, the latest version, the 2020. In case you want to know, if you if your school have a campus license or not, you can check it in, in this link. And if you have any questions on what type of license or how to apply to this license, you can guess you can get back to us, uh, and we will direct you to the right person uh, within the MathWorks organization that can assist you with the best uh, licensing option for you or for your institution. Um, so now, yeah. Please go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, sorry. So this is a super quick video on how to start MATLAB and Simulink. So let's take a look. Excellent. So that was that was pretty much the the demo on how to uh, um, install the trial license. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So that was uh, pretty much the the demo on how to install the MATLAB and Sibling in case you don't have it installed before and in case you want to use a free trial license. Like I said before, uh, if you already have these tools, you just skip this part and go and proceed directly with the extra packages. Uh, you definitely need to do this part uh, if you want to operate the projects uh, and uh, there's basically four steps. You need to install the MATLAB add-ons for uh, the, the, Arduino, the MATLAB support for Arduino hardware, and same with Simulink, uh, the USB um, the webcam uh, support package and the project files. And we're going to see a continuation now, uh, a video on how to do this as well. Also, when you are on this part of the add-ons, uh, we recommend you to have your board and your cable near to you because also you will need to configure your board. So, but let's take a look. Excellent. Place again. Yes. Okay. Now. <laughs> so that was the software part, right? Yes. 
So uh, yeah, just to mention that, uh, like it was it was said before, uh, all these step by step processes clearly explained on the first chapter uh, of the content. Um, so with illustrations and images of you know of where you should be, every window you should be looking at. So uh, everything is explained there. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the hardware, the components, and also the projects. Um, So this is the, the complete list of the components that are included in the kit. Um, like uh, Rock said before, uh, pretty much everything you need to build the three projects are included in the in the box. With a few exceptions, there is, um, I think, a screwdriver and a plier uh, that are not included in the kit. It shouldn't be too hard to find. Um, however, we include uh, a Halen key for the small uh, for the smallest uh, screws. Uh, so you don't need to uh, break your head trying to find it. Uh, and of course, uh, one of the projects uses a whiteboard and the whiteboard is not included in the box, of course. Um, one thing that I want to uh, repeat uh, here, uh, it was mentioned before, um, the components, pretty much most of the electronic components and, and most of the mechanical pieces as well are shared between the projects. So you can only build one project at a time. Of course, you can Later on, when you finish working with the project you're currently using, you can disassemble it and assemble the next project with, with no problems. So let's take a look at the next uh, at the next slide. And I'm going to speak a little bit more about the, um, the main contribution of, of uh, the Arduino electronics in the kit. Uh, so there is two uh, custom electronics developed by Arduino uh, that are included in the kit. The first one is the Arduino Nano 33 IoT. It's a, it's a very small form factor board designed for IoT applications. Uh, there you have it. Uh, it contains a, um, a Wi-Fi Bluetooth capabilities uh, and it's a Cortex M0 controller. Uh, this will be the brain of all our robots and it will be the board that will be communicating with uh, MathWorks tools, both with Simulink and with MATLAB. Uh, the next board is the nanomotor carrier, which is a board that uh, was designed specifically for this kit. Uh, this, this board is basically an extension board. Uh, uh, we call it a carrier. So the nano board goes and connects on top of that board. And it basically contains all the electronics that are needed to drive the motor. So include H bridges for the motor drivers. It includes um, uh, power voltage translators uh, and uh, switches, power switches, and so on boost converters and everything that you need to every, everything that we need to actually operate uh, the motor so uh, it contains a total of uh, four dc motor ports that you can use to drive four different dc motors you can actually also connect two stepper two bipolar stepper motors in those connectors and it also have uh, four servo uh, outputs uh, it contains two encoder inputs so three of the three of the uh, DC motors that we have includes encoders that we're going to be using uh, to uh, to basically monitor the feedback loop or uh, to monitor the position using the feedback loop. We, we're going to use the encoder as, as the feedback loop in our in our control systems. So we need the two uh, we need the uh, we need the encoder inputs, and this is provided in this board as well. Uh, it contains the power switches, uh, and uh, one of the things that um, uh, it was um, it was there was a question that was brought before uh, what was the difference between the uh, Arduino Rev 1 and Arduino Rev 2 I think I'm, I'm going to go a little bit more in detail uh, in in the uh, Q&A session but one of the changes that we did was to merge uh, some of the boards that uh, in the in the Rev 1 there were three boards and we merged two of them to to create the nanomotor carrier so this one also includes an IMU sensor embedded in the board um, so that that's pretty much the overview of the of the of the electronics that are included in the kit. Uh, let's take a look now at the projects. Uh, so the kit comes with uh, with pieces to assemble three different projects. The first one is the drawing robot. Drawing robot is basically a plotter, so it's a robot that you're going to hang on a whiteboard and it's going to replicate an image that you take with your phone or download from internet. And um, the whole idea is to uh, take an image, we apply some image filtering to delimit the contour of the image to make it easier for the robot to draw. 
And then we explain all the mathematics that we need to do the mapping between the pixel of the image and the position in the whiteboard. And it's a, a rather interesting conversion. We need to, we need to move from, um, from the pixel to the number of revolutions per minute in the motor. Uh, we're using the closed loop control to actually uh, uh, count how many revolutions we need to, mo to go in order to move to a specific part. There is a lot of trigonometry involved because of the nature of the way that the, the robot is hanged on the whiteboard and everything is covered both from a theoretical and practical point of view. Uh, this drawing robot is entirely using uh, MATLAB. The web control robot is the second project. Uh, it's also, uh, uh, it contains similar aspects in, of control, but in this case we are using a webcam to, uh, to take an image of an arena where the robot is going to be located. And we're gonna use that image as a feedback to know where the, where the robot is located. So we're gonna draw obstacles on a paper sheet and the robot is going to navigate through the arena, dodging this obstacle and maybe picking up objects uh, with a forklift mechanism, all using the webcam as a feedback loop. Uh, this project also is a mix between MATLAB and Simulink, so we're using both softwares here. And we're also using Stateflow, which is a library that is used uh, on top of Simulink in order to uh, create state, uh, state machines, to program state machines. And the third project is the self-balancing motorcycle. Uh, the self-balancing motorcycle is, is um, in reality, is a classic uh, control systems problem, which is the inverted pendulum which is you have a fixed, uh, you have a, a movable element that is fixed in the bottom, but it can, it can pivot. And then you have a inertia wheel or a flying wheel that uh, will try to rotate to compensate for the falling to keep the, to, to keep the, the, the system uh, um, in equilibrium. Uh, this, uh, this project is using entirely simulink. So it's all uh, visual based programming. And, one thing, so these are the three main projects that are covered in the kit, but um, one of the things I, I like to say when I talk about this is that um, um, to me, the, the biggest value of the kit is, is the versatility of the kit. So once you complete the three projects, there is a lot of room for improving, uh, uh, keep on exploring uh, on your own. So you can maybe uh, reuse the electronics to build uh, your own custom robot. Uh, or you can, for example, repurpose some of the robots we have done here to, to do something completely different. For example, uh, one of the things we did for the drawing robot was to build a system that was a tic-tac-toe machine. So we are using the webcam of the web control robot project and we pointed to the whiteboard uh, in order to read the moves of the user playing a tic-tac-toe. And then uh, the the we are applying a minimax algorithm in order to basically detect or, or, or think the next move and the robot will do it. And you can eventually play a whole game with the robot and the robot will never lose because this game, uh, if you do it properly, you never lose or, you, or it's a draw. Uh, so, uh, and there are many other examples. Uh, I think it was shown in a video before, uh, a student also made um, a phone application that he was using the Nano 33 IoT board, uh, connecting with Bluetooth with, uh, with his Android phone uh, to control the, the robot from his phone. So that's again, an addition uh, of, the, of, of, of a project that you can do when you finish with the projects that we experience here. So there is a lot of room for experimentation as well. Um, so here, so here. yeah, yeah. <laughs> go ahead, Rox. So you can go to this, URL, and then you can find or download in PDF the product fact sheet of the engineering kit, the curriculum alignment grid, and also some FAQ. So you can get more information about it, like in this, going to in this URL. So, so Ernesto, now could you explain the difference between the Ref1 and the Ref2? Yes, we can start with that one. So, um, the Rev1 was running for about two years and it was a, a product that we were really happy about. Um, but we had a lot of time to speak with professors and students to see what were the things that we could improve. Uh, of course, one of the main improvements was on the hardware side. Uh, we did some modifications moving from one of the maker boards to one of the nano boards. 
and we include, uh, for example, a battery charging mechanism in the hardware as well, which is something I forgot to mention when I was speaking about the board. So in the Rev1, you needed an external uh, battery charger uh, in order to uh, recharge the batteries. Uh, in this project, in this in this revision, you just need to uh, plug the USB cable to the to the board while it's in while it's assembled, and you run a sketch, and then you can basically charge the batteries without um, without uh, um, the disassembling the project. There was a lo a, a huge revision on the bill of materials. Uh, so we we uh, we spoke with uh, different suppliers. We managed to reduce the the, the overall cost of the kit, making it more uh, uh, price friendly for students. And there was also a huge revision of the content. Uh, we got a lot of feedback about um, things that could be explained in an even better way. And uh, so we took we took note of those uh, feedback from different professors, and we. Um, we work a lot on the content side as well, not only from the from the content itself, but also from the platform, which is an additional improvement that we did. We changed the platform where we host the content, and it added a few a few extra features. Like um, uh, it it allow us to uh, increase the number of languages. So now we have the the engineering kit in available in Spanish as well, and more languages will be coming up. Um, and we have features like click to enlarge. So you have an image, you can click it enlarge the feature. That was all those changes were based on uh, on, on on you know all, all these revisions. So in the the in essence, the kit is the same. It's the same three projects, but we change a lot of uh, of elements, both from the hardware side, from the software side, from the content side as well. We also, for example, improve some of the of the. Uh, control design uh, models of, uh, for example, the motorcycle to to allow a better performance. So it's easier to balance, it's balanced for longer time, etc. So it was a whole, uh, complete, full revision of the kit, improving different aspects of the whole experience. Nice. And uh, the students need to have some previous experience before going through the lessons, or that there's no previous experience needed. Um, in terms of uh, the, let's say, the hard skills, there is no pre-requirement. The kit is intended as an introduction to both mechatronics, robotics, and uh, MathWorks tools. However, it's a kit that is intended for um, engineering students, so a certain level of maturity instead of understanding complex concepts is required. So you don't want to uh, give these kids to maybe a um, 10 year old kid like some of our other kids, for example. So certain level of maturity uh, with, and, and familiarity with some uh, technical terminology is required, but no previous knowledge really is required. Pretty much any uh, high school student or, or engineering student should be able to, uh, to go through the content without, uh, without issues. Like, how is the estimated time to build, for example, each project? So the assembly time is about 40 minutes. We have a very nice uh, assembly video in each of the chapters that we will be showing uh, when Leonard comes in and speak about the content. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the average time for assembly, one full kit, is about 40 minutes. But there is a very detailed video instruction on how to, how to do this process. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that's that's fine. So then teachers can adapt always the time they spend in the lessons and in the projects, right? According to their needs or the time they have. So like yes, exactly. Have. Yeah, that's great. So I don't know if there is another question. I've got, uh, I've got a couple here uh, in the chat. Are the projects independent, or do you have to take each project apart and reuse the parts to complete the next project? A good point. And so each project is independent from each other. So the, 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 con, the whole content is divided into six chapters. So the first three chapters are basically an introduction, um, getting started, and a few terminology that we're going to be using uh, uh, in, the, in the following chapters. But once you reach the first three chapters, uh, you can basically pick whatever project suits best either for your interest or for the particular class that you're teaching. 
so you can do them in any order. Uh, is they're not linked to each other. Uh, the only thing is that, as was mentioned before, if you finish one product and you want to do another, you need to disassemble the parts and uh, reassemble them to build the next project. I think you started to address this one and may have covered it well enough, but I'll ask it again. Do students need to already know MATLAB before using the kit? Uh, absolutely not. Uh, this is a great kit or a great um, addition to add uh, uh, for a, a classroom that is uh, giving or starting with uh, with uh, MATLAB and Simulink. So apart from the installation process, so we start even there, we start even with the installation process uh, of these tools, and then we give a, 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 a brief overview of the main features. So it's, for example, chapter number two, it's uh, an introduction to uh, MATLAB, an introduction to Simulink, an introduction to Arduino as well. Uh, so they can actually use that chapter as the first step to get familiar with the tools, how to connect Arduino with MATLAB, uh, how to run the commands, get familiar with the, uh, with the IDE, with the development environment, um, how to create variables, how to create matrices, how to you know, start the, the first step with these tools, and the same with uh, Simulink. So in Simulink, which is a visual uh, programming language, we start with a very basic um, block diagram where maybe a student will create a sign function that will be then uh, applying some filter or um, or some some kind of uh, transformation and then we have a scope when they can see the result of the of the signal so all these steps are to like very getting started with the tool before actually jumping into the real projects so either if you're using uh, the kit uh, uh, if you're using the, the whole kit to base your class uh, you can actually start with those uh, with those lessons to get familiar with the tools and then you can just jump on a, a specific project perfect i think we just have a couple of minutes uh, all the questions that were posted in the in the question box have been answered um, i don't know rox do you want to uh, tee us up for uh, our next uh, session. Yes, just if you have any support and questions about prices, just contact uh, the Pitsco team here at these email addresses. And uh, yes, next webinar it's going to be in two weeks, March 2nd, uh, Tuesday. We will have Michon Marathi from MathWorks and we will explore more in detail about what the MATLAB, Simulink, and how they work together with our team. So we hope to see you all there. And, and thank you again to Ernesto and Christine. Thank you, Brandon, and thank you for all of you for joining today. Excellent. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone.